Hello, my name is Drew Hammond, and I am a lecturer at the University of Glasgow, a composer, and I'm delighted to have written a piece for Dunedin Consort and St. Andrew's Voices, commissioned, co-commissioned with the University of Glasgow Dear Green Bothy project. And um, I think I'm going to talk to you a bit today about kind of the background of the piece. Isabel MacArthur, who is the, uh, the lyricist, I, I suppose we'd call her, and I were paired together for this project. Um, it's kind of um, the first time, as you say, I, that I, I, I've set words before on a number of occasions, of course, but there were always poetry that I found and I was interested in the setting. It was the first time I've had the opportunity to work with somebody to kind of tailor the words a bit better. And um, I found that both challenging but extremely rewarding. Um, Isabel and I spent sometime just emailing back and forth talking about ideas really um, and her specialty is of course Scots and sh she's a playwright and she's interested in the Scots language and um, what we kind of came across were a lot of really interesting Scots words that are very very expressive now initially I mean I'm very much a product I think at least in part of the the kind of avant-garde and modernism and so forth um, and I was looking into all kinds of things along those lines that were that were more in the areas of like concrete poetry and so forth that I could play with games with. But I think we discovered that in this process that that for something is um, is sort of frightening, difficult and in and and in need of action as as you know something like climate change, that actually uh, an emotional response was really a much better um, way to approach it. Um, and so we found well, I say we, I, I encouraged <laughs> Isabel to discover and, and, and um, interesting words and to write some poetry that, that really kind of dwell on a sort of feeling of desolation um, at just the, you know, all the things that we face when it, when it comes to uh, environmental catastrophe, you know, climate change, loss of, of so many species in the world um, through extinction, um, and then just the sense sometimes that the world seems, I, I suppose, um, but the first line of the, of the piece is, uh, new wit is ne hackett dune, <laughs> or rotted is, and there's a list of things, um, these really expressive Scot uh, Scots words, um, blazon for blazing, like burning, or reekin, of course, which we all know is, um, smelly <laughs> and so forth and and it's really kind of I think at the beginning of the piece is really a lament um, a sort of environmental lament the harmony of this piece has a really long history with me um, I tend when I'm writing pieces of music to start with fairly strict harmonic frameworks to work within you know it's kind of like writing a harmonic language I would I, I would describe it as um, and then it helps me as a composer um, to have those parameters to work within. Now, many years ago, I think, uh, probably, I think, 17 years ago, um, I wrote a piece called, called Carpenter Creek. It was an orchestral piece. And at that time, I was thinking about my home in central Kentucky um, in the summertime. And the whole backstory really comes down to becoming fascinated with jazz chords at a time when I was extraordinarily hot and having to work outside a lot. <laughs> and so I think I developed an association with certain sort of jazzy sounding chords. I'll play a few here, like what we would call a minor major nine chord, like that. Became very much associated with me, associated to me with hot weather. And, um, but also a real love of forests and like all the streams and fields and so forth that I played, played in when I was um, growing up in Kentucky. And it kind of, in a sense, I think in this piece, in that piece called Carpenter Creek and then subsequent pieces became a kind of environmental theme in my mind, harmonically. Um, I took the harmony, I extended it a bit further. That chord that I'm playing for you there can be broken into two triads, three note chords. It's a six note chord that can be broken into two three note chords, minor triads. And if I further um, extend that into a bunch of different transpositions, chords in different places on my piano, in essence, we get a series of six note or six chords or um, 12 chords, six hexachords, 12 triads. Or 
for the triads. Now this um, has been used over and over again in pieces of mine, um, just because I, I find it, I suppose, beautiful, but also neat in the way that it works. <laughs> it's sort of, it's sort of self-contained. Thing, and it repeats itself nicely. And so um, I use it over and over again, as I say. Um, it, I tried to not use it in this piece initially, <laughs> but I just kept on, because of the subject matter and because of this, this kind of sense that Isabel and I had ar arrived at, at, at this kind of lament um, that becomes quite angry in the middle and then ends in this chorus that en envisions, you know, us talking to future generations and, and saying um, all this was once a paradise, you know, all this that we've completely wrecked for you was once a paradise and you can't even know. And it's just, it's, it's all very sad. Um, so I got, I got sort of drawn back again and again to this kind of harmonic framework that I used. And it came out, you'll hear it in the piece, if you listen to the piece, um, a kind of revoicing of the triads, of the, of the 12 chords as and the bass and tenor at the end. Now I won't try to sing the Scots there because I would embarrass myself a bit. Um, but there is a, th that, that chorus at the end has the line, yin de for it an ayunt, yin baron will ask, is it true that all this ash and reek was yin's a paradise? That's kind of the, uh, the idea um, behind the end of the piece. <laughs> 